Thank y'all for tuning in. My name is Jacob Thornton. I'm a Christian. I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I live in Orville, California. This is the Bible Search Program where we search the Bible. You can send me, get a hold of me. You can send me a text, send me an email. You can give me a phone call. I will study the topic of your request. I'll study the scripture of your request. I will put together the material and present it to the public and the community on video so that way individuals can see clearly what the Bible teaches. Yesterday's video, we studied Daniel chapter 7. I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 2. Tomorrow's video will be Daniel chapter 7. Yesterday, we studied Daniel chapter 2, and it mentioned four kingdoms. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And in the days of the Roman kingdom, the kingdom of God would be established when Jesus ascended into heaven. And in Daniel chapter 8, the focus is on the second and the third universal kingdoms, which was Medo-Persia and Greece. And so we don't read about the first kingdom in Daniel chapter 8. We don't read about the fourth kingdom in Daniel chapter 8. We don't read about the kingdom of God being established in Daniel chapter 8. So in Daniel chapter 8, we read about specifically Medo-Persia and Greece and the events that would occur as a result of the clashing of those two nations. And so here is the outline of Daniel chapter 8 and verses 1 and 2. Daniel sees a vision. It's the background to the vision of where he's at, when he receives the vision, how he receives the vision. In verse 3 through 10, Daniel's vision is revealed in detail what he sees. In verses 11 through 14, the focus is on the little horn of Daniel's vision. In verses 15 through 19, the vision, we're told there's an interpretation for it. In verses 20 through 26, we read about the vision's interpretation, what it means. And in verse 27, we see Daniel's reaction to the vision. So the point of these being highlighted, these are the verses which we're going to go over in today's video regarding Daniel's vision in detail, the focus on the little horn, and the vision's interpretation. What does it mean? So you're going to wonder, what does all these signs and symbols mean? Well, we're going to get to that today. Here is the outline revealed with the interpretation. So Daniel sees a vision. That's verse 1 and 2. Verses 3 through 10, Daniel's vision he sees is regarding the second and third universal kingdom, which is Medo-Persia and Greece. And in verses 11 through 14, Daniel's focus is on Antiochus the fourth, Epiphanes. He was one of the rulers that arose from the split that occurred when the Grecian kingdom broke up. Verses 15 through 19, we learn that the vision has an interpretation. In verse 20 through 26, Daniel's vision is of the second and third universal kingdoms with a focus specifically on what would occur during the time of Antiochus IV Epiphanes. And historically, you can look up Antiochus IV Epiphanes and see um, what he did, the type of ruler he was. This is the vision which Daniel sees. Daniel sees this uh i think ram let me go let's go to the text a ram with two horns and a goat so he sees this ram with two horns right here and this goat with one horn attack it and then stamp it on the ground and kill it this goat with two horns represents medo persia the two horns represent media which is medo persia the other horn represented persia this goat represents Greece, and the horn of it represents Alexander the Great. And then we read that this horn broke, and then four horns came up out of it. And so we're going to get into that. And so let's just start it. But this is the vision which Daniel sees and the interpretation given of it. And all it's saying is that, Alexander the Great would lead Greece to conquer Medo-Persia. Alexander the Great would die, and Greece would be split up into four kingdoms. Basically, that's the interpretation of Daniel chapter 8. And verses 3 through 10, we're going to read that now. Daniel says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. He sang Medo-Persia. And the two horns were high, but the one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. So he sees the universal power 
of this kingdom, the great power of Medo-Persia. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came, so here's Greece, from the west, on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. The notable horn is reference to Alexander the Great. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power, and saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with shoulder against him, and smote the ram, and broke his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, and he cast down to the ground, and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. And so that picture being presented is, here he sees this uh, ram with two horns, and this goat with one horn. And so this goat with one horn comes against this ram with two horns and stamps on it, killing it. No one was able to save this animal. And so it just represents Greece conquering Medo-Persia. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great. So Greece grew great. And he was strong. The great horn was broken. What's that mean? Alexander the Great died. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And so when Alexander the Great died, Greece broke up into four different kingdoms. And out of one of them, out of one of those four kingdoms, came a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great. And this is reference to Antiochus' fourth epiphanies. Toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. So here's a symbol for the pride and the arrogance of Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes that he exalted himself to heaven. And he exalted himself, declared himself, he thought of himself as a god. He magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. So Antiochus IV Epiphanes caused the daily sacrifices in Jerusalem to stop. And the place of God's sanctuary, which was the temple of Jerusalem, was cast down. And all you have to do is read the history of that. Antiochus IV Epiphanes and the tribulation which he caused to the Jewish nation. And the reason why is because the Jewish nation was involved in sin. So God allowed Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes to punish the disobedient Jews. And a host was given to him against the daily sacrifice. Here's why, by reason of transgression. Because of the Jews' transgression, Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes was allowed to punish them. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So here's the question. How long is this going to last? He tells them, but he says, look, the sanctuary is going to be cleansed. So even though the Jews are going to be punished here by Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes, the sanctuary, the temple in Jerusalem, that wasn't the end of it. It was going to be cleansed. So they were just going to be punished for their disobedience. But then after their punishment, they would be restored. And so here is the vision's interpretation given in Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 through 26. These are Bible verses. This is literally the Bible verse interpretation for what that vision meant. And it says, The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. And so we talked about that. About how the ram having the two horns represented Medo-Persia. The goat that killed the ram is Greece. And the great horn is the first king, which was Alexander the Great. Now that being broken. So the great horn being broken is Alexander the Great being dead. Four stood up in its place. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of that nation. 
but not in his power. And so the four kingdoms that stood up, let's see if I can read sideways. Seleucius, Ptolemy, Lysimachus, and Cassander. And these four kingdoms, when Alexander the Great died, Greece existed in the form of four kingdoms. It was split up. Let's see. And in the latter time of their kingdom, reference to when Greece split up into four kingdoms, in the latter time of their kingdom, in the later time, in the end of the kingdom of Greece, when the transgressors are come to a full, so the Jews are being disobedient, their transgressions are filling up and time will come for them to be punished. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. This is reference to Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. So he's telling Daniel, it's not going to happen in your lifetime. But this, this is going to happen for sure. And so in our past, as we're reading this, this was in Daniel's future, but this is in our past. By the time Jesus was born, all of this was already fulfilled. Daniel chapter 8 was fulfilled by the time Jesus was born. And so the king that it says here destroyed the power of the mighty people, the mighty and the holy people would be destroyed is reference to the the tribulation they would go through under Antiochus, the fourth epiphanies. And so these are my words for the rest of the PowerPoint. These are my words. Uh, I inserted the interpretation of it. So Daniel's vision in detail interpreted. <clears throat> then I lifted up mine eyes and saw. So this is Daniel's vision, because remember <clears throat> in Daniel's vision, he says, <clears throat> you know, I looked up and I seen this uh, ram with two horns, lifted up mine eyes and saw and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. Well, based on the interpretation given in this chapter, we know that's the kingdom of Medo-Persia. And then, you know, we have this he-goat, which represents Greece. And then the notable horn is referenced to their first king, which is Alexander the Great. So I just go ahead and insert that so that way we can understand what he's talking about easily. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw the kingdom of Medo-Persia. And as I was considering, behold, the kingdom of Greece came, ruled by Alexander the Great. And he came to the kingdom of Medo-Persia in the fury of his power. And I saw the kingdom of Greece, ruled by Alexander the Great, smite the kingdom of Medo-Persia and broke their power. And there was none that could deliver the kingdom of Medo-Persia from the kingdom of Greece, ruled by Alexander the Great. Therefore, the kingdom of Greece grew very great. And when he was strong, Alexander the Great died. And four empires, four kingdoms came out of this one kingdom, Cassander, uh, Seleucus, Lysimachus, and Ptolemy. I know I probably didn't pronounce those well. And out of Seleucus came forth Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes, who grew exceeding great. He exalted himself even to the host of heaven. So he has this pride and this arrogance in which he exalted himself and thought of himself as a god. And so here's the interpretation, though, given that there was a war between the Medo-Persian kingdom and the Grecian kingdom. Greece won. Greece was led by Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great died, and then four kingdoms arose out of Greece. And it says, this is reference to Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes. He exalted himself, even the God. Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes caused the daily sacrifice in Jerusalem to be taken away, and the place of God's temple in Jerusalem was cast down. He was allowed to stop the daily sacrifice in Jerusalem's temple due to the transgression of the Jews. He prospered in his ungodliness and against Jerusalem. The transgression of the Jews would lead to a desolation, a waste in Jerusalem. In order that the daily sacrifice would be stopped, the temple and the Jewish people would be trampled underfoot. And after the days of their punishment, then the sanctuary would be cleansed. And so that's literally what those verses are interpreted in the last one when he gives the interpretation. So here's the visions interpretation interpreted. This is just where I insert historically 
what he's talking about here. Thou sawest the kingdom of Media and Persia. Thou sawest the kingdom of Greece and their first king, Alexander the Great. After Alexander the Great's death, four kingdoms shall arise up out of Greece, but not in his power. And in the latter time of Greece's four-part kingdom, when the transgression of the Jews are come to a full, a king of fierce countenance shall stand up, which is referenced to Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. And his power shall be mighty, he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He shall exalt himself in his heart, and shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against God, but his power shall be broken by God. And so Daniel chapter 8, it's not hard to understand. It's all historical for us. Uh, it was future to them, but for us, it's in our past. And by the time, like I said, Jesus was born, all these things were fulfilled. Um, they were fulfilled before Jesus was born. And so when Jesus was born, they weren't waiting for those things to happen. This is the outline given for Daniel's Daniel chapter 8, where Daniel seen the vision. And then his focus was on the little horn. And the interpretation is given. And here's what he's seen. Daniel's vision, he saw the second and the third universal kingdoms, Medo-Persia and Greece. His focus was speci specifically on what would occur during the days of Antiochus IV Epiphanes. And Daniel's vision in the interpretation, it says that. That the second and the third universal kingdoms, Medo-Persia and Greece, are under consideration. And when Alexander the Great died, Greece became a four-part kingdom. And out of one of those four parts arose one who persecuted the Jews because of the Jews' sin. And that historically is Antiochus IV Epiphanes. And so this is what also Daniel chapter 12 is about. And I will look at that and review that and prove that at a later time. Um, not on this series, but... You just have to know that in Daniel chapter 12, you read about the shattering of the holy people, which isn't talking about 70 AD. It's talking about this time frame, this time period of Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes. Let's see here. And what you have to know is that Daniel chapter 12 mentions, um, you know, the sanctuary trodden. But what we learn from Daniel chapter 8 is that during that time when Antiochus Epiphanes, even though it says here, he destroyed the holy people, which is referenced to the Jews and Jerusalem, the sanctuary would be cleansed. So that wasn't the end for their nation. Even though it's pictured and sounds like the end of their nation, the end of their nation in 70 AD is not under consideration here. I'm trying to find the verse right here. He shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, this is Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. This is also in Daniel chapter 12. And so where it says the power of the holy people shall be shattered. But we learn even though the power of the holy people would be shattered, even though the uh, mighty and holy people would be destroyed, there would be the cleansing of their sanctuary. And so if you have any questions, go ahead and get a hold of me. And like I said before, I'll go over Daniel chapter 12 at a later time. But we studied Daniel chapter 2 about the four kingdoms and the kingdom of God being established in the days of the fourth kingdom. We studied Daniel chapter 8 today where the focus is specifically on the second and the third kingdom, Medo-Persia and Greece. Tomorrow's video will be on Daniel chapter 7. And then I have planned for the rest of the week, I think the next day after that, John chapter 3 and the conversation which... Nicodemus has with Jesus regarding the new birth and how that new birth would come into force. And then in the following day is Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through, I can't remember the rest of the chapter, regarding uh, the kingdom of God and the destruction of Jerusalem. And so if you have any questions, like I said, get a hold of me. My ultimate goal for you is to see and learn from the Bible so you might teach the correct interpretation of it and also so that your hope and faith might be placed in God who spoke these things before they happened because God knows the future and so Jesus tells us the future Jesus said whoever believes and is baptized will be saved and so will you be saved on that day are you doing what God has said to do we need to obey Jesus it says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him are you obeying Jesus? Jesus said that on that day, many will say to him, Lord, Lord. And Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you, you who work lawlessness, you who practice 
sin and iniquity and the word is referenced to a legal activity not authorized by God and so we need to be sure that we're abiding in the doctrine of Christ and Jesus says why do you call me Lord Lord and do not do the things which I say you know a lot of individuals out in the community say they love God a lot of individuals go to different denominational churches but they don't teach the truth those churches you can't find them in the Bible and so don't be found in a church that you can't find in the Bible you know the, the church of the Nazarene can't find that church in the Bible. The New Life Church can't find that church in the Bible. The Trinity uh, Bible Church can't find that church in the Bible. The Baptist Church can't find that church in the Bible. The Lutheran Church can't find that church in the Bible. You know, the Methodists, the all these different groups, these churches you can't read about in the Bible. So why are you joining yourselves to them? Their church isn't in the Bible. Their teachings and doctrines aren't in the Bible, and we can go over it on a separate video, which would be actually a really good video. I'll add it to the list. Individuals in a community. Most of the denominations in your town, especially in Orville, think that your children are born sinners. They think your children are born evil, and they think that they're born completely evil. They couldn't be more evil. That's just a false teaching, and you really want those type of people teaching your children teaching your children that they're evil. You know what, why would you correct your children then? If they're as evil as they can get and they're not gonna get any better. And you know, there's just so much that you can use to argue against the fact that babies are born evil. The Bible doesn't teach babies are born evil, but that's what all these different denominations are teaching your children, that your babies are born evil and that God made them that way. Bible doesn't teach that. But that's what the denominations teach in this area. They believe that God gave you your spirit and God gave you a tainted, corrupt spirit. That you're born a sinner. It's not the case. You're born innocent. You have the choice to choose whether or not you're going to practice sin. Simple as that. All of us obviously make the choice sooner or later to violate God's law just like Adam and Eve did. But you're given free will to do what you want. I hope y'all choose today to make the choice to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, to repent of your sins, to confess your faith in Jesus as the Son of God who died for your sins and rose from the dead, and that you might choose to be baptized in order to receive the forgiveness of your sins. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And that you might choose to have your sins washed away. That's Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Baptism saves us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. There's only one church which Jesus died for and shed his blood to purchase. That's Acts chapter 20, verse 28. There's only one church, Ephesians 4, 4. And Jesus is the savior of only one church, only one body. That's Ephesians 5, 23. You need to be a member of the church of Christ. Romans chapter 16, verse 16 speaks about the churches of Christ and how they salute you. And that's written to Christians. But the idea being presented is that even in verse 17, so Romans 16, 16 says the churches of Christ salute you. Verse 17 tells the churches of Christ to avoid false teachers and those who speak different doctrines, different teachings. And so the churches of Christ is not referenced to all the different churches in the community. A lot of individuals think, oh yeah, the Baptist church, the Pentecostal church, the Methodist, the Lutheran, all of those make up the church of Christ. No, nowhere will you find that in the Bible. Those churches aren't in the Bible. Those churches aren't the Church of Christ. The Lutheran Church is not the Church of Christ. The Lutheran Church is the Lutheran Church. Can't find it in the Bible. Jesus didn't purchase it with his blood. All these different churches, and you can't find them in the Bible. But on the Bible search program, we do examine what we will find in the Bible. In Daniel chapter 8, we read about the second and the third kingdom, Medo, Persia, and Greece. And so if you want to find more about what is in the Bible, Stay tuned because we have a lot of great, wonderful videos coming up. Like I said, you can send me a topic, a scripture, and I will study it and do a video on it. Hope you all have a nice rest of your day, and I hope that you choose to obey Jesus and receive the forgiveness of your sins. If you haven't been baptized and you believe the gospel, go ahead and get a hold of me, and we'll try to get that done today. Um, you need to obey the gospel. You need to be saved before you die. Have a nice rest of your day.